Me and you used to come up here, hunt the muzzleloader season. Turn around and come back and hunt the gun season. And come back Go after. home for a couple weeks and come back for the late muzzleloader. After, after Christmas. Or yeah, yeah, we'd stay, we'd be up here in New Year's, you know. We, we had some good times up here. We've hunted the far this old mountain town. You ain't kidding. It ain't I love this old mountain up I here. Too. I like it. I like it up here. I mean, good gosh, I can find places that's got more deer to hunt. I mean, this used to be an awesome place to deer hunt, but I don't want to find it. I mean, I wouldn't. I would not mind at all to find a good uh, a place to go and camp that had some. A lot of deer on it. You know, e even if it was a decent sized farm or something, you know, if you hunted on that'd be good too. But we used to go up Blackstone. Well, Mylon had, Gracie, he had, uh, I don't know how many hundred acres he had, but he had one cornfield, 600 acres. And he had a, I mean, that was a good enough farm to hunt. And, and you, you you were just welcome to hunt. They wanted to get rid of some of the deer. They had the cockeyed man deer. They welcomed deer hunters, you know. <laughs> and like his wife said, she said, are you going to hunt any across the road? And I said, well, I guess so. She said, I wish you would. She said, there's so many of them old deers over there. <laughs> and that was back when, by golly, we didn't have any deer hard to speak of in this part of the country. They just eat up with them up there. I mean, to walk around in the, through those woods and fields and stuff, you were constantly bumping into herds of deer. 20 to 30 or more deer in a herd every time you turned around. But you'd never, but you rarely ever saw a, a good buck. Well, you know me, I like to walk these old mountains and all that stuff, but I'm, I'm getting where I'm certainly not opposed to an easier way to hunt I, these days. I'm like you, I, I can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I just, I, I go staggering down through them old leaves and sticks are sticking out. I just can't do it. Oh. I was out Jack's truck a few minutes ago. I said, I swear, Jack. I sat around very long. I said, when I get out of that truck or something, I said, I move like an old man. He said, he said man, up on that farm, he can take that side by side with you. Yeah, he said, we are old men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy, he might be right. Now the sun is coming up in almost the same spot that the moon did last night. Of wisdom, <laughs> you can't count what you're doing now as hunting. Is that right? No. That's what I'm doing now is looking. <laughs> There's a, something that I don't see a whole lot of. Well, I heard on the, where I hunt on the national forest. There's a hunter come up a little snag over here. But the part of the National Forest that I'm hunting in right now is a, uh, a little kind of a square jutting off of the, the main, the main uh, portion of the National Forest. Surrounded by private land down here. Normally, you'd have the whole area to yourself. But I have. I believe this is maybe, over the years, that might be the second, I don't know, maybe third time I've actually seen a hunter down in here, but not very often. Like I said, normally I can go for days and not see a hunter, and I can do that right now. <laughs> I knew when I come down in here that uh, that there's a possibility you can see people because it is surrounded. It's not all that big, and it's on three sides it's surrounded private land. 
and there's a few camps uh, pretty close to us which uh, which means people could easily just walk down here into it so leave that fella was going to take up a stand there he started getting the, <laughs> he started settling in I kind of coughed at him a little bit <laughs> and he waved back and I think he's going on not fixing the rain again. I've been caught out in the rain twice already today. I'd just soon not do that again. I'm gonna not go too much further. Right down here and find me a little place to sit down and watch for a while. To I don't want to get out here and get caught in another rain that's late in the day. No, nope. not a long ways from camp anyway. So.
shack back at camp. Got a stuffed baked potato going. <laughs> uh, sounding good. I think I'm going to head that way in a few minutes. Sit around here just a bit longer and then pack it up. Head back up the ridge to camp. Well, I am well up the mountain. I'm good ways up here. Told Jack we'd meet back at the camp in 21 and 2. Go across the mountain to the store. We need to get a few supplies. And another thing we need to do is make a phone call. Check back on the old home place. Check on Kevin Kenny. Kenny had surgery. Kevin had that blooming tick in him. So, 12.30 right now, so i got a good hike to get off here. So I better get started. Jack allows us, huh? His dog saved him from a long deer hunt this afternoon. Get wet. <laughs> get wet. He didn't get too far away. <laughs> dog called him back. <laughs> I didn't have a dog, because I got a pretty good way down through yonder. And the rain caught me for the third time today. That's unreal. I mean, that's... <laughs> that three times... <laughs> Down in the woods, you know, like I said, it caught us several times here under that on him, tat on cow. <laughs> that was perfectly fine. Well, I got down there and I got to thinking about them. That stuffed baked potato that you, <laughs> that you had going, it started raining. I thought, I'm out of here. That potato's done. I got, I'm just ready to put on the hamburger. When it's... <laughs> Do we have any sausage left? No, damn dog got it. He did? Yeah, I yeah. left it sitting on the damn well, table. Well, he, he come out here to do something, went back in. <laughs> well, he's smart dog. He's <laughs> smart dog. He knows good deer sausage. When he gets it. I can't believe he eats that spicy stuff and it don't affect him. <laughs> what we need to do is not make so much. Don't fry so much. Well, that's fine. Put fry. it back in the freezer, refrigerator. Fry it. Right, and what don't you use, put in the refrigerator. It'd be good. I like to sit on the table until the slumbers come outside. Yeah. Well, I yeah, forgot. That's a... I forgot it, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I need to. Have we got another one? Up here? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. I've heard so. I got, I got to go down there. May have another one. I don't, I don't know. know how much I've got. Let's see. I don't know. Mm -mm. I think I only brought two up. Oh, gracious, damn it. Feeling right grubby. Got the big pot of stew heating up again. That ought to be good. <laughs> Got a pot of coffee going. And I bought some eight point buck IPAs. And then Jack's gonna drink a couple of them. I reckon Reckon that means if you drink them, you're gonna go out and kill some eight pointers. Do you reckon, Jack? Huh? That eight point IPAs. Yeah. I reckon that means we'll 
we drink them, we're going to go kill some acorns. I got up, took me a little bird bath. <laughs> Might not look any better, but I feel a, a, a sight better. I got. Love these old woods. This mountain and all that, but I got basically our deer camp is dwindled down to there's just a couple of We'll get into the whys of all that pretty soon, but <laughs> it's mostly Mostly just me and Jack right now. Deer camp. A shadow of what it once was. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy. I'll go ahead and finish dressing. Go up to Jack's camper. We'll get some coffee. Get this non-hunting Sunday started. In Virginia, you cannot hunt on National Forest on Sunday. You can on private land. And like most laws, that makes a lot of sense. Lordy. But anyway, let's go up and get some coffee going. Well, <laughs> I'm known far and wide by the quality of my naps. <laughs> and I just took a good mm, lazy, warm Sunday afternoon here in November. Can't hunt National Forest in Virginia on, on Sunday, so me and Jack's lollygagged around and enjoyed the camp. I mean, this is highly unusual, this weather, and we are really enjoying the camping. I got the whole doors, windows open here on the My wonderful little van, and <laughs> I'm sleeping like a log. <laughs> now Jack has never developed the fine art of napping. Can you hear him? <laughs> he got that leaf blower out. That boy's always doing something. Some people refer to him as Jumping Jack. can of tricks. Really good boot. He was uninsulated. Take that more boot. I got 400 gram and I used them out in Colorado. When it was cold. Cold. And I never did get my feet. 
Oh, see, it never did get cool. 400 gram pencil. I mean, 400 gram uh, can of tricks. Well, we just had a little bit of, <laughs> I guess you'd say excitement. Kevin, the boy that was just uh, come up to join me and Jack, and he'd been a part of the group forever. He's a younger guy. He, he's in his 50s. And anyway, he got a, to come out and he had a tick on his arm. And I've never seen a tick like that. I've never seen a tick that color. And I've never seen a tick that you couldn't pull out. I mean, we got tweezers and everything else. That thing would not turn loose. I mean, would not turn loose. Then it just started the back end of him pull off, and another piece would pull off. It, with the tweezers, just pieces of him come off. He got right down for what was below the skin, and he got everything off above the skin, but you, there's piece down up under the skin that we absolutely cannot get out. It don't look good. I've never, like I said, I've never seen a tick that color. And I've surely never seen a tick couldn't get out. So, discretion being the better part of valor, we prayed over it. He's going to be all right, but he needs to go get it checked. So he's on his way now out to find out where the closest uh, urgent care or type of walk-in place is around here. And depending upon how far he has to go, whether he even comes back to camp tonight or not, or whether he goes on home, or what they find. But that thing needs to be got out of there and needs to be looked at. So. Now it's back down to just me and Jack again. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Deer camp has dwindled over the years. They out to pretty much me and Jack. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Uh, just, let me tell you, this thing here that I'm talking to that good looking woman of mine, that's what I'm doing. But I said, I'm talking to that good looking woman of mine. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, now we come out here at the store to check in and to get a few things. Oh, I'm so glad you called. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to check on Kevin. Uh, he got a crazy looking little tick in him up, up under his left arm. And buddy, I could not get it out at all. First tick I ever seen, she couldn't get out. And I, I got him out in pieces and got him down to skin level just below it. And we tried everywhere in the world to get it out. Odd looking tick. I mean, you could pull you could pull on him with tweezers as hard as you want to, and he'd just pull in pieces, but he would not turn loose. Oh my gosh, Dennis! Well, did he come home? Yeah, he come home, and he the emergency places was all full last night. And when he got home, Terry tried to get it out; she couldn't get it out. He got up this morning and was waiting at the door when the, one of the emergency care places opened up, and he said that gal who was working on him said. She sent out four times to get different instruments to get oh, get Lord. that thing to get that thing out. And then she still had to get out three more pieces. He said she about killed me. <laughs> oh my Lord, Dad! We got it out in three pieces and put him on ten days of antibiotics and I don't know oh, what all, but you might want to check on him. Okay, I, I don't think he got it up here. I think he had it in him before he got here. He got here Sunday afternoon, and we found it mon uh, Monday afternoon, but I think it had done been in there. Oh, Lord, bless his heart. But I don't know. We don't know where he got it, but anyway. Yeah. Is everything well, okay? Um, I'll check on him. He called me um, the other night. I guess it was Friday night. Mm-hmm. If you hadn't seen any, I'll come on up there. <laughs> well, okie dokie. Well, okay, honey. So you still planning on staying till Friday? Well, I, we, we had planned on staying till we were, whenever Jack wants to come home. Okay. 
Okay. Well, that's okay, honey. Enjoy yourself, okay? We yeah. are fine here. Okay, babe. Love you, sweetheart. I love you, honey. Tell Jack hello. <laughs> All right. All right. Love okay. you, baby. Bye, honey. Jack here, you're taking me to the train station. <laughs> you're going to take me out here to the train station. Amen. Dump me off. Uh, smoke, Jack ever offers to take you to the train station, you run, boy. <laughs> I've offered to, I've threatened to. I've offered to. <laughs> Oh, poor smoke. He tries his best to do what I want him to do. Sometimes he gets a little too aggressive. Oh, him. Lord. <laughs> He's a ball of fire, bud. I went right down there to see what that big black ball was. And it was something they had thrown across them rocks. <laughs> Now, officially at the train station. <laughs> He's gonna put me out. <laughs> are your hands cold? Yeah, that's right. Mine are. Maybe I'll wait here at the train station just a second to warm my hands up. Well, Jack dropped me off here at the train station. <laughs> <laughs> he going on. He'll come back and get me about five o'clock. I'm gonna work my way up toward the Mountain Dew Thicket. My boy, I'm gonna tell on myself. You talk about one bullet Barney. Right here he stands. <laughs> I had Jack bring me all the way out here, drop me off so I could hunt up toward Mountain Dew Thicket. I did not bring my hunting pouch or my powder horn. <laughs> I have no reloads. I got one bullet. <laughs> so today I am officially one bullet Barney. <laughs> Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> Good Lord.
That's what pays you to have the orange on, ain't it? <laughs> No, I saw you coming. I said, that fella, neither. <laughs> he don't have a lick of orange on. <laughs> I, I hate that law. Yeah, I do too. I hate it. It's, a, it's crazy when a damn government can tell you what color clothes you got to wear. I got wear. it in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever. You will, you will be on YouTube, by the way. Oh, Lord, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you will be. <laughs> right. Oh. I'm out here in this big woods all by myself. Lonesome. <laughs> here comes a fellow. Yeah, that doesn't look around him. I got here in the middle of nowhere. Here comes somebody. He ain't got any better sense than I do. <laughs> well, you're going to video me leaving. <laughs> oh, good to meet you, bud. That's a rare thing. Boy, up here, that is rare. Meet somebody in these woods. <laughs> you know, wow, this makes day number five of the muzzleloader season. I've been roaming these woods for five days now. And that fellow just left a big hunter number two that I've actually seen in the woods. <laughs> it's hard to believe. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've run across two people in these woods. <laughs> Lord hell. Must be some kind of record lately. I mean, usually out here, you don't see anybody. <laughs> now, years and years ago, you used to bump into one hunter after another, but not anymore. The deer are spread out all over the place, hunters are spread out, there's not near as many hunters as there used to be. And I've actually, like said, this fellow just made hunter number two. <laughs> actually, kind of nice to stop and palaver a little bit. <laughs> Oh my, I've seen two hunter. That's right that on the counter. dropped off the main ridge up here, which is quite high. Dropped off it down through all the Rose Bay rhododendron. Down here into the little bottom, this little creek bottom. We'll sit around here and watch it for a few minutes. You know, back several years ago, before the blue tongue pretty much wiped a deer out in this mountain. This mountain was a good place to hunt. You come up here and on typical 
typical hunt, you know, a few days hunt, you'd see 15, 20 bucks. You didn't have to be in any hurry to, to get your deer. You could, you could pass up several bucks waiting on a little better one. And ever since the blue tongue, when that blue tongue hit it, I mean, it just about wiped the deer out. You could come up, we come up here for the next two years, you could hardly find a deer track in this mountain. I mean, it was devastating to the deer, devastating. And that's been several years ago. They're slow, slow, slow to recover. In my opinion, the, the problem with the recovery being so slow, back then there were precious few bears up here in these mountains and almost no coyotes. Coyotes in this area are a relatively recent <laughs> introduction, if you want to call it that. Uh, we were one of the last places in the country to get coyotes. My gosh, and we got them, we got them. But between the bears and the coyotes, the deer population is slow, slow, slow to recover. And I highly doubt that it'll ever get back to what it once was. But it's hard to kind of explain the fascination with, with this mountain. I, it, it's just a place you like to come, a place you like to hunt. And you've got to really like to hunt. Because <laughs> you sure don't see many deer now. You come up here and hunt a whole season now, you only see 15, 20 deer, period. Oh, good grief. I've had one, one opportunity, and that was right on open day. Hadn't been hunting <laughs> just a few minutes. I had one opportunity. There's not enough horn there. I passed that up. I ain't had an opportunity since. But do I enjoy still hunting around through these mountains? Yeah. But you got to really like hunting and deep woods hunting to just keep on hunting with such a low population. Especially when you <laughs> run around then you start remembering how good it used to be. <sighs> it's hard to put your tag on a used to be buck. Oh well. This mountain's a shadow of what it used to be when it comes to deer population. And our deer camp's a shadow of what it used to be <laughs> compared to what the population of deer camp used to be. Now it's pretty much down to two. Me and Mr. Jack. Two eighty year old codgers. <laughs> Still at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, goodness gracious. I've hunted my way up, way up the mountain and kind of dropped off into a little valley here. And in a couple hours or so, so Jack's supposed to pick me up down the road, so I'm going to start still hunting my way back down off the mountain here. Yep. Yep. Jack's gonna pick me up down here on the forest road.
and about an hour. Sun's going down behind the ridge back here. Jack's gonna pick me up just before dark down here on the road, Forest Road. Forest Service Access Road, so I'm gonna sit around here for a few minutes and work my way on down toward the road. I have not seen the first deer today. But oh my goodness, what a beautiful day to be in the woods, but <laughs> I love to hunt. I like to see something once in a while too. So far, I haven't seen a thing today. If you see that, that's my last musket cap that I've got on me. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I have been one bullet Barney all day. Like I said I left my I left my powder horn and shooting pouch and everything back at camp. Jack drove me out here to, to the train station, pushed me out. And <laughs> he went back over, drove off, he went around the curve outside. I realized I didn't have my powder horn and shooting pouch. I said, oh my goodness. So I looked through my pockets and I found one percussion cap in my shirt pocket and one in my vest pocket. Boy, I've guarded that thing all day long. Just a few minutes ago, coming through a laurel thicket down here by a creek, I looked down and that musket cap gone. So I got my very last, <laughs> I got my very last chance to fire this thing sitting on the rifle right now i got about an hour of hunting left see if i can keep up with that cap for an hour <laughs> uh, maybe i can maybe i can't Well, I'm back here at the, I'm back here at the train station, waiting on Jack to pick me up. And where I've been hunting, be back on that mountain. potatoes man is going here. Jack talked to somebody out there on the road that said there's a hundred percent chance of rain Friday. And I said if that's true then there's a 99 percent chance <laughs> that I'll spend Friday in the Quigley. Old Jack, we love this mountain up here, but we're going to pack up <laughs> and call it a trip. Go back to the house. I mean, <laughs> we come up here for the, the camp and then the hunting anyway, because ever since the blue tongue, the coyotes, there's no one near them. Deer appear to yesterday. We're gonna pack it up in the morning. 
breakfast last morning in camp. <laughs> and again, my camera's cold, it's wanting to fog up. <laughs> it's still sausage we're having bacon today. I'm out of sausage. Hmm? We run out of sausage. Yeah, boy, we put the hurting on some sausage. <laughs> Lord mercy. I'm going to have to kill 18 deer to make up sausage for that. Lord mercy. I asked Jack, I said, are we coming back for the late muzzleloader season? <laughs> Which is <laughs> uh, Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> yeah, what was your answer, Mr. Odell? <laughs> it was a little more emphatic than that. <laughs> it might have it might have had to be censored. <laughs> Do what? There's not enough deer up here for me to come up here and run around. <laughs> Cold for a long time. Not like it used to be, huh? At least you can see something. Warm me up a little bit. You can you can hunt out your kitchen door at home, can't you? I porch. can too. <laughs> Off the porch, something. Yeah. And see more deer. But there's something to be said about running around this mountain. Oh, I like them up here. I do too. <laughs> but we, 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 may, we might not be burdened down with a truckload of deer going home, but there we ain't had a perfect camping weather, ain't it? It's one of the most enjoyable hunts, <laughs> deer camps that we've ever had. The only time we come in the campers when we wanted to, wasn't it? it wasn't because it was well, too got cold. It. Got it now by myself. Yeah. How about you, Ken? Step in there. No. Huh? I don't know that's what we got to do first or not. I don't know either, Jeff. We're going to leave his mark on this place. <laughs> Anyway, leaving deer camp, 2022. It's been a really great camp. The hunting was as expected. Kind of slow up here in the National Forest. You spend your time, you'll get your buck. This time where it was so warm and so pleasant around camp and so too hot to get out and hunt like I do, like hunt on the move and you climb up and down these mountains, it just it just hot. It just it just wasn't pleasant, put it that way. But, but camp life. Camp life was wonderful. So me and Jack, we'd get out and hunt a little bit here and there. Not much. But basically, my gosh, we enjoyed our trip. Two old 80-year-old fellas uh, getting out here and enjoying ourselves as much as any teenager. I mean, <laughs> we, we've enjoyed it. Now I'm ready to get home, feast my eyes on that good-looking woman of mine, take me a good hot shower, and it's hard to say what'll happen. Supper or something. <laughs> Some kind of treat or something. Anyway. <sighs> kind of bittersweet, really, when uh, when each, each one of our little deer camps are closed up. <laughs> Jack and I decided to even if nobody ever come back again, we had a ball. We, it worked out really good for both of us. It worked out good. Uh, I'm 
try to catch up to him here. He got a little bit of a start on. Oh, there he go, 